Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. I'm Bekays and today we're talking about the new McLaren T50S Nicky Lauda. So if you haven't heard already, the T50 is uh, Gordon Murray's new attempt at a supercar, which weighs under a thousand kilograms and has over 660 horsepower from its naturally aspirated 3.9 litre V12 rowing over 10,000 RPM. Now the T50S has been announced, which has 725 horsepower and weighs 852 kilograms, which gives it a power to weight ratio of 824 brake horsepower per tonne. To give you some perspective, that's the same power to weight ratio as that of an NA LMP1 car. So there's going to be 25 that will be built. It's a track-only hypercar. It's obviously a tribute to Nicky Lauda, who died in 2019. And Gordon Murray actually worked with him in Formula 1 in the 70s. This variant is about 100 kilograms lighter than the regular T50. So like I said, it makes 725 horsepower, shall I say, with the ram intake at 11,500 RPM with peak torque at 485 newton meters at 9,000 RPM, which is quite astonishing really from such a small lightweight engine. It only weighs 162 kilograms, 16 kilograms shaved off from the regular T50 road car. The engine produces this amount of power because its compression ratio is on another class entirely, 15 to one. Now the last time we saw a road car which was adapted for the racetrack was with the Lamborghini Gallardo. When it was on its way out, the Sesto Elemento was created, a two million pound hypercar killer, weighing under literally 999 kilograms with around 570 horsepower. This takes it up to the next level. And that was a fast car to be fair. The Cessa Lamento did a 0-60 to 60 of 2.5 seconds thanks to its all-wheel drive and the Gallardo's. No official performance figures have been given out yet, just yet, but we know it's rear-wheel drive. The interior is a lot simpler than the T50 road car. You can see just the difference because there's no infotainment, nothing. Not even a manual transmission actually, they replaced that with a quick hit quick flappy paddle, I think a sequential so it's lightning fast and you can see the steering wheel is absolutely tiny with minimal controls on it but functional and then you can see the uh, master switches there um, to fire up the engine, fuel pump, other stuff that you'd need if you're racing start stop, forward and reverse gears, two what look like air convents which you can open you only need two really and it's very driver centric i think the seat is non-adjustable this hasn't been declared but it could be one of those where you could move the pedals closer or further away depending on your size and um unlike the t50 rocal which inspired by the mclaren f1 has three seats so you the driver uh the driver in the center and two flanking you this one has one to your left uh, when you look at this image so you can take a passenger along for a very quick ride I think that was also to save weight because you don't need a third passenger in a race car basically and you've also got this digital readout that can um, display your aerodynamic information the gear, gear change indicator telemetry lap time child pressures g-forces and there's also an in-camera video feature that you can use it looks a lot like a Hot Wheels car, a brilliant design. The wheels and tyres, though are lower profile than the road car, are even lighter. So they've saved weight with every single inch and surface with this car, as well as the gearbox too. The rear of the car is much more aggressive. You can see the aero from the back and a lot more aggressive diffuser, absolutely monstrously huge bodywork at the back just looks slightly different with the um, metal uh, metallic design at the back above the wheels that huge rear wing giving that presence and that massive fin down the middle to help with uh, cornering stability and because the banks of the exhaust are very close together 
it simulates a sound close to 24,000 RPM because you've got both dual exhausts resonating off of each other, as quoted by Gordon Murray. Of course, there will be a select amount of people in this world that will be able to purchase such a toy, really, and even fewer that would be willing to drive them hard, anyway. Combine that with the extremely aggressive frontage, too. The front splitter comes out quite ways away from the bodywork. It looks like it's also got some inserts underneath the headlights, as well as some fins at the side, scoops that go through to cool the wheels, and like these venturi tunnels also going through, and directing air directly through to the back of the car as well. All of which makes this car produce a peak downforce 1500 kilograms, which is absolutely insane. So it can corner at 2.5 G in fast bends and under braking at 3.5 G. So originally, the downforce figure peaked at 1900 kilograms but was dialed back because Gordon Murray didn't want drivers to experience too much cornering forces. The automatic transmission, which was developed by X Track specifically for this model, uses a pre selector function to deliver the shifts almost instantly. Seamless power delivery, so it says. And the ratios are slightly shorter than that of the T50 road car. That can hit 230 miles an hour, whereas the T50S Nicky Lauda has a top speed of between 200 and 210 miles an hour. You would imagine that with such a small, lightweight car, with that much downforce, it would be able to hook up almost instantly off the line and be able to get there much quicker than any sort of road car. So it doesn't really matter about top speed. And also you can set a different gear ratios as well. If you was to set it closer, you'd be able to improve the acceleration and cut the maximum to around 170 miles an hour. And it depends on what track you really want to go at. There's no um, hypothetical times as of yet. Of course, when we're talking about suspension, it's got forged aluminium front and rear double wishbone suspension. So it's the same as the T50, but it's got revised settings to the spring and dampening and anti-roll bars, which would probably be lighter, like I said. Haven't seen anything like it because you look at most race cars these days and they don't have such clean lines like this car. The bodywork is just fabulous to look at. My favourite colour too, orange. Orange brake calipers. And the ride height as well, the stance on it is mega insane. Under 90mm at the front and about 110mm at the back. So it's super, super low. You probably barely get your hand underneath it, to be fair. I mean, you take it from the road car and the inspiration from that as well. The road car has very clean lines. It's not the most attractive looking car on the market. It's certainly there to be sold to enthusiasts. Oh, did I mention that 15 of these have already gone? So like I said, 25 will be built, 15 already gone, so there's 10 more left to purchase. The customers of the T50 will be able to personalise their T50, of course, with it being such a limited run, you probably have any sort of colour choices you want. There'd be a configurator that you could use. So that's the T50S Nicky Lauda. Hope you've enjoyed this informative video. If you want to read anything more on it, there's some links in the description below of the articles that covered this. Thank you so much for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe, and peace.